tracking the week, on Monday, President Bola Tinubu intended to enforce the national living wage in 2024 as declared in his New Year's message. He reassured the public that his efforts to reform the nation were proceeding as planned, underscoring his attentiveness to the citizens' concerns. The president encouraged the people to remain steadfast and resilient in the face of challenges encountered in 2023. President Tinubu acknowledging that in the past seven months, his administration has taken difficult and necessary decisions to save the country from fiscal catastrophe, said one of such decisions was the removal of fuel subsidy, which he said had become an unsustainable financial burden on the country for more than four decades. The president said the government had worked to free captives from abductors just as more steps were being taken to ensure Nigerians and all those who reside in the country have peace of mind in their homes, places of works, and on the roads. Also on Monday, President Tinubu signed the 2024 Appropriation Bill into law in keeping with his avowed commitment to maintaining a timeless, predictable, and efficient budget cycle. Tinubu assented to the bill at the State House shortly after returning to Abuja from Lagos. Speaking at the signing of the bill, the president assured Nigerians that the implementation of the budget would be efficiently pursued and vigorously monitored, adding that all the institutional mechanisms shall be held to account in ensuring diligent implementation. The top priorities of the 2024 budget of 28.7 trillion naira are defense and internal security, job creation, macroeconomic stability, improved investment environment, human capital development, poverty reduction, and social security. On Tuesday, the federal government, through the Ministry of Education, has suspended the accreditation and evaluation of degree certificates from Benin Republic and Togo. The spokesperson for the Ministry of Education, Augustina Obilo Duru, disclosed this in a statement issued on Tuesday in Abuja, saying the suspension followed a report detailing how a degree was acquired from a university in Benin Republic in under two months. The report lent credence to suspicions that some Nigerians deploy nefarious means and unconscionable methods to get a degree with the end objective of getting graduate job opportunities for which they are not qualified. According to the statement, the Federal Ministry of Education vehemently decried such acts and with effect from 2nd January 2024, suspended evaluation and accreditation of degree certificates from the two countries pending the outcome of an investigation that would involve the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Nigeria and the two African countries, the ministries responsible for education in the two countries, as well as the Department of State Security Service, DSS, and the National Youth Service Corps, NYSE. Also on Tuesday, President Bola Tinubu approved the immediate suspension and investigation of Ms. Halima Shewu, the National Coordinator and CEO of the National Social Investment Program Agency and SIPA, over alleged financial malfeasance. With the suspension and investigation into the allegations, Dr. Akindele Egbuwalo, the National Empower Program Manager, was appointed in acting capacity as NCCEO pending the conclusion of the investigation. Ms. Shewu's suspension came about three months after the confirmation of her appointment by the Senate. Before her appointment, she had worked as the national coordinator of the Conditional Cash Transfer Program and had previously served with the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development between 2017 and 2022. On Wednesday, according to the latest Times Higher Education THE World University Rankings, WUR for 2024, the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, FUNAB, emerged the best university of agriculture on the African continent and seventh globally. 
the 2024 WUR utilized the new 3.0 methodology evaluating 2,671 entries from 1,906 universities across 108 countries and regions. The methodology involved 18 meticulously calibrated performance indicators assessing institutions in five key areas such as teaching, research environment, research quality, industry and international outlook. The ranking process involved the analysis of over 134 million citations from 16.5 million research publications and incorporated survey responses from 68,402 scholars globally. In total, 411,789 data points were gathered from 2,673 institutions that submitted their data. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Babatunde Kainte, extended congratulations to the entire university community for the inclusive achievement and called for further collaboration to achieve greater feats. Still on Wednesday, Senator Magnus Abe, the former senator representing River Southeast Senatorial District, said he was returning to his former party, the All Progressives Congress, APC, to support President Bola Tinubu's developmental agenda. Abe, who was the governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, in the 2023 general elections, disclosed this during a stakeholder meeting held in Port Harcourt with some members of the SDP who are loyal to him. He said his return to the APC would enable him to work together with other well-meaning Nigerians to support the administration of President Tinubu and enable Rivers people be part of the development at the center. He stated that the responsibility of engendering peace in the party is that all members, regardless of their position, be ready to work for the progress of that party. He said the chairman caretaker committee of the APC, Tony Okocha, had been a member of his team when he was in APC, and as the party by the National Working Committee decided he becomes the chairman, so be it. Abe stressed his readiness to work with other actors in the APC as long as they are ready to work with common grounds and goals. On Thursday, the Minister of Works, David Umahi, stressed the need for accurate budgeting, a review of contract specifications and general conditions, emphasizing the impact of proper cost estimates on national road projects. The minister made the disclosure at a meeting with directors and management staff in Abuja, where he expressed concern about internal debt and highlighted the importance of giving the right price to projects to maximize available resources. Correspondent Kunle Ojo reported that on issues in the purchasing process, Umahi highlighted the need to track liquidated damages for site delays. He urged vigilance in dealing with issues like fake mobilization claims, emphasizing the importance of holding contractors accountable. The minister also announced a monthly progress report requirement with consequences for non-performance. He emphasized the importance of discipline, efficiency, and urged staff to align with the ministry's vision and goals. Still on Thursday, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, said former Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Shadia Umar Farouk, did not shun its invitation, as reported by a section of the media. EFCC spokesperson Dele Oyawale said this in a chat with newsmen in Abuja, explaining that the former minister sent a letter that she couldn't honor the invitation as she was indisposed. Oyewale said the commission conceded her plea and expected that she would honor the invitation without further delay. He added that there might not be any reason for her arrest as she had done the needful through her lawyer. He also explained that the 37.1 billion naira being branded might not be the correct figure of the money misappropriated by the ministry. The spokesman also said the national coordinator and chief executive officer of the National Social Investment Program Agency and SIPA, Halima Shewu, had 
been released. This was as he decorated the commander of the Presidential Air Fleet, BAF, the commander of the Brigade of Guards, BOG, and his chief personal security officer, CPSO, for their dedication and commitment in the discharge of their assignment. Addressing security chiefs and heads of intelligence at the Presidential Security Briefing at the State House in Abuja, Tinubu said, while good progress is being made with the elimination of some security threats across multiple theaters, success will ultimately be defined by a final conclusion to the multidimensional menace. The president emphasized that the armed forces must deliver on his objective to ensure the nation achieves the sustainable production of 2 million barrels of crude oil per day, including condensates within the first quarter of 2024. Commanding the commander of the Presidential Air Fleet, speaking at the decoration of PAF Commander Air Commodore Olayinka Olushola Oyeshola with his new rank of Air Vice Marshal in the Nigerian Air Force, Commander BOG Adebisi Olushegu Nosoya, who is promoted from Colonel to the rank of Brigadier General, and the Police CPSO Usman Musa Shugaba who is now a Deputy Commissioner of Police after being promoted from his prior rank of Assistant Commissioner of Police, President Tinubu said he was very impressed by the officer's loyalty and dedication to duty, which he said has earned them the promotion. Finally, on Friday, the body of late former Governor of Ondo State, Arakunri Oluarotimiya Kiridulu, arrived in Nigeria. The plane conveying the body arrived at about 3.39 p.m. on Friday and was brought into the country from Germany, where he passed away. The plane conveying the body arrived at about 3.39 p.m. on Friday. The late governor's remains were brought into the country from Germany, where he passed away, and was received by his wife, Betty Anyangwa Kiridulu, his children, and siblings led by Professor Wale Akiridulu, his immediate younger brother. Governors of Lagos State, Babajide Somolu, represented by his chief of staff, Tayo Anyide, Ogun State, Prince Dakpo Abiodun, represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Tokumbo Talabi, and Oshun State, Ademola Adeleke ably represented, also joined in receiving the body. Alongside the chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC in Ondo State, Ade Adetimei, a member of the House of Reps, Boyega Adefarati, and some members of the Ondo State Executive Council, led by the Secretary to the State's Government, Princess Oladuni Odu. Family members, followers, friends, and associates could not control their emotions as the body of the late governor was being lowered from the plane. That is all in Tracking the Week.